Man, days like today, I kind of wish I was an otter instead of a raccoon. Because, man, is it humid. Well, conveniently enough, we're going to be spending, spending, we're going to be spending this stream underwater. Drat, I completely botched that opening. Whatever, time for the real opening. Welcome back to the Final Fantasy V for Job Fiesta. This is a challenge run of Final Fantasy V in which I use only four of the available 20-some mob job classes in the game. This challenge run is to help promote Child's Play, which is a charity that provides hospitals with toys and video games for sick children. Because being stuck in a hospital is scary business, especially if you're a kid. Having those toys and games would help them feel a little bit more at ease. If you are interested in donating to the cause, there is of course down below a link so you can donate to Child's Play, as well as a couple of links for information on the charity as well as the challenge run itself. Now, half of the money that I receive from Patreon during the course of the Forge of Fiesta will be going towards Child's Play. And in fact, just earlier today, I donated $16.06 to Child's Play. That is half of the money that I received during this past month. So, when we last left off, I acquired the Summon of Bahamut. And... It was hard. That's like three summons so far that I have, a, have had a hard time trying to acquire. And... I mean, I'm glad that I got Leviathan, because otherwise I would have had to go through that entire dungeon again, but still. The fact that I've been having so much trouble with these summons kind of gives me the impression that maybe I was a little underleveled. And so, in between streams, I have taken the time to do a little bit of grinding, and now I'm at higher levels. And while grinding, I of course mastered a few more classes, which means everybody is a different job class now. Another Red Mage, Bars the Thief, Cryo... Cryo looks ridiculous in that outfit. And Ferris the Monk. So that is the details with that. Anything to say about equipment? Hmm... Well, I will say this. I've been getting a lot of tips on advice on this game and I want to go ahead and thank the person who's been giving me this advice and that person is Julius T Orange on Twitter Julius has given me plenty of advice and in fact there's some advice on what I might want to consider for this particular stream so I got some of those messages on screen right now I mean, not on screen for you guys, but on screen for me. Let's see here. Mentioned something about the Enhancer, didn't you, Julius? Where was that information? Uh... Ah, uh, great. Here I am, wasting time, just trying to find the notes. Oh, I just went through the whole thing and I missed it somehow. Go me! Whatever. Do I even have a Defender? Or maybe it wasn't the Defender. It was the Room Blade, that's what it was. The Rune Blade has an advantage for some reason, I was told. Possibly because it's like an axe. That's right. It's good for high defense enemies. I couldn't find that advice in this list for some reason, but at least I remembered it. Well, if you guys are still watching after I fumbled through my advice, then now is the point that I tell you that I did a little exploring underwater off camera because I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any secret places underwater. And as it turns out, there is. Right here, this is where Guido's cave was when it was sunken underwater. But now it's a little bit different. There's just some guy here. What is up with you? Oh, hello, babies. I'm Mr. Cleo, your psychic friend. I know all kinds of things, even about your journey. Come on, babies, the cards never lie. I know you want to hear. Sure. Uh, 
Okay. This is interesting information. Not really useful information. You're not going to tell me how many times I've ran from battle? That's kind of important. So that's it? Really? This is the only reason that you're here? To give me sass that I don't care about? Goody. Even more wasted time. Let us move on. So where do I want to go next? We have a couple of options. We can all... We can either go to the Tower of Walls, which sunk underwater a long time ago, but now we have access to it. Or we could go to the Great Trench, which is actually a really, really difficult dungeon. Let's go to the Tower of Walls first. So this place is going to be an interesting challenge. Glub, glub, glub. Gah! I can probably hold my breath. Glub, glub. But only for about seven minutes. So, we need to get to the bottom of this place in seven minutes or less. And apparently, human bodies in this world do not float. Which is probably a good thing. So we're just going to run from everything because, well, we're on a time limit. And running from things will make the chicken knife stronger. Oh, is that a treasure? Why is there a treasure? There shouldn't be a treasure. It's probably a monster inside too. Either that or it's empty. Gasp. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Okay, got another seven minutes. You do not get another seven minutes. It just repeat your seven minutes. Also, I obviously forgot that the air bubble was there. Had I known that, I probably could have gone ahead and fought some battles along the way. You know what? Let's go ahead and fight some battles along the way. You got some rusted enemies. Since we're underwater, I can't imagine Leviathan's gonna do too well. Let's try Sildra. Okay. Let's try Sildra two times. Yay, the ability to double cast summons again. There we go. Also, summoners are so much stronger at summoning uh, monsters. Wouldn't you know it? Okay, we're not fighting you more than once. Give us those other enemies. There they are. Time for more Soldra. Is that a goblin? Oh, okay, Sildra is not going to be useful here, apparently. In this particular battle, that is. Uh, Leviathan. Can I blink this Titan? No, those guys are obviously floating. Let's just Rama. We're underwater. So, would that goblin have actually been a threat? Or is it just dead, and we're basically just trying to kill statues? Anyway, this is what we came for. It has taken the first two acts, but now the amazing power of this crystal shard is within my competent grasp. I shan't allow you to take it, so turn back and be gone. No. Tsk tsk tsk. Then let the curtain rise. 
My name is Gogo. Mimic Extraordinaire. The basis? No, the very soul of mimicry is the ability to aptly imitate anything, no matter the situation. Thusly, I will imitate your every move. When you attack, I will attack. When you cast a spell, I'll cast a spell. Could you imitate me, you'd certainly win. More likely, it will be curtains for you. So, this is the fam famed Mimic Gogo, who also appears as a playable character in Final Fantasy VI. But here, he's just an optional boss. And the trick to this boss is don't do anything. And hopefully, we don't have to wait for very long. You know, in hindsight, had I known that treasure chest contained fresh air, I would have grabbed it on the way up. Yeah, if, if I run out of air waiting for this boss fight to end, That'll kind of suck. Again, being an otter would be pretty convenient. I'm not sure that an otter can go underwater for seven minutes. But a hey, possibly better, longer than these characters can. And as a bonus, Otters are absolutely adorable. No, seriously, how long do I have to wait? Oh, bravo, bravo. Perfect, just lovely. You've seen me doing nothing. And are copying that nothing yourselves. Rather, you're doing perfectly nothing perfectly. Yes, you feel it, the instance of mimicry. I give you my blessing to continue on the true path of imitation. I do break a leg, don't drown. And he just banished himself into the rift. What? Okay, let's not spend too long. Okay, cool. Job level. Job level! Resting within the shard, a warrior spirit. Mine! We can't use mine. I'm not even sure it's an option in the Forge of Fiesta, given how late you find it. No, oh, drat. The timer's still going. I was kind of hoping that with the timer off screen, it was not going anymore. So, now we absolutely most certainly want to run from everything. So let's run from everything, and not drown. Again, that treasure chest full of air would possibly be helpful for getting out of this situation. I think we're gonna be okay though. Nope, wrong one. Seriously, for being humans, you guys sink like stones. In fact, you sink like stones not affected by the pressure of water or something like that. Oh, those were different enemies. Hmm, I probably could have tried to fight them. But not you guys. And the music got weird just then. So if getting out of the submarine leads to water, why didn't the submarine fill with water when we opened the door? Hmm. 
By the way, in case you're wondering why I went for the Mimic Shard, even though I won't be able to use it, for completion's sake, Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and save, and then I'm going to look over these notes that I've marked as important, because I, I don't want to... I, I don't want to be lost while I'm figuring things out in the dungeon. So let me see here. What are some interesting, worthwhile tips that I was given? Having four reflect rings now, if you return to the wind shrine to get elixirs dropped by mold winds for healing, you have a chance to hit Bahamut. Well, it's a good thing that I looked at those notes because we're actually going to be doing something that doesn't ev involve going to underwater places. So where is that wind shrine? It's around here somewhere. Ish, to the right. I, I saw it before. It'll be right up here. So, I want to give everybody a reflect ring, huh? Alright, well, let's, um, see what we're actually dealing with here. I have no idea what a mold wind is, but apparently it's something that would cast magic and drops elixirs, I guess? I don't think there'll be anything on the first floor. So let's go here. Is it gonna be a random encounter? Okay, these are just level one enemies. Or at least level three. At most level three. Maybe I actually found these guys here. Oh, there's a mold win. Now, why do I want the Reflect Ring? Which one of these is the Mold Wind? Is it that guy up there? See, I wasn't actually expecting this to be a level 1 monster we're dealing with here, which is why I didn't ask for any information on that. Oh, there we go. There was fire taking effect, I guess. Um, yeah, I saw that coming. Okay, there's another mold win. But why do I want the reflect ring? Maddie says because I can cast arrow. And arrow will get me elixirs? I would just assume that killing them would get me elixirs, but... Yeah, had I known that this was a level 1 monster that I was looking for, I would have asked why I needed to have... Reflect Rings. Because when I was told, hey, you have 4 Reflect Rings! I assume that means that I wanted to equip them so that I wouldn't have to worry about getting attacked from something really strong. So am I actually trying to kill these guys? Or am I stealing from them? Maybe I'm stealing from them. No, they don't have anything to steal. What the heck? Having four Reflect Rings now, if you return to the Wind Shrine to get elixirs dropped by Mold Winds for healing, you have a chance at Bahamut. Yeah, this is a waste of time. I have no idea what it is I'm supposed to be doing, if anything, or if I just came here to fight level 1 monsters in the hopes that they just randomly drop elixirs. So. We're just going to skedaddle and continue on with the main quest. Most, most of Julius T. Orange's advice 
is good.